The theme of this conference is, is um, how do you operate in a connected world? Well, I, I figured I'd tell you a couple different ways that Uber thinks about connecting our constituents. And those are the riders and the drivers. Affordability is at the core of, of what we do. And we always try to make sure that from point A to point B, we are the most affordable option, no matter what time of the day, where you are, uh, and compared to some of our competitors and, and uh, what we think are other alternatives from point A to point B, uh, this is just a sample price list of our Bangkok business. But the story here is the same. Uh, We're always trying to be the most affordable. We also have to bring you that car very fast, uh, make it convenient and reliable. And what you'll notice here is some of the, the oldest businesses that we have in San Francisco and New York, of course, our pickup time is the best, two minutes, three minutes. Uh, but then once you get to the, the notoriously congested cities like Beijing and Bangkok, the one that we're in right now, and Delhi, we are delivering you a car within five, six minutes. And it's really our data-driven approach that predicts demand, uh, analyzes and predicts demand across temporal dimensions as well as geospatially uh, to be able to tell a driver, hey, if you go here right now, you are most likely to get a, get a, uh, a request. And we layer that uh, on the app there. Not many of you have probably seen our, our driver app, but we layer that information, a very intuitive interface on the driver app, uh, color-coded and everything, uh, so that the drivers can act on this information, people who share similar routes. So for decades and decades, governments have dreamt of enabling carpooling and evangelizing carpooling in their city because of congestion. Well, the, the missing piece the entire time has not been folks who want to do it, but the technology. So if you build a business like uh, Uber, what you're able to do is as you gain that critical mass, as you build liquidity in your marketplace, you're able to confidently say, at any given moment, at any given point in the city, we, can, we have confidence that we're going to be able to match multiple passengers who share a similar route and give those parties one car to drive in and share together. And Uberpool is something that a year ago, two years ago, was a mere concept for us. It's just in the first eight months, we have facilitated over 5 million rides in just in the city of Los, Ange Los Angeles on Uberpool. Um, and you can, you can do the math. Uh, the, the hundreds of thousands of, of petrol that we're saving, uh, millions of driving miles that, that we're, we're saving from this. And of course, as we experience that exp exponential growth, uh, this impact is going to be higher and higher. Super excited to bring this to, to APAC. Lastly, a lot of folks think that Uber is an alternative and Uber is a replacement for existing infrastructure. That's just not true. And what we actually see is that even in cities that have robust public transit options, people are using Uber to, uh, for this first and last mile concept, uh, either going to or uh, getting picked up from an MRT stop or a BTS stop. And in fact, in Bangkok, it turns out about 20% of our trips start or end at an MRT or a BTS station. In Singapore, that's even uh, larger, something like 20 30%, especially when there's heavy rain, that number gets up to 35 to 40%. And as we bring down affordability, as we cut our prices and further and further, and as the platform gets more and more popular, we expect this trend to continue uh, and increase over time. And so these are some different ways we think about connecting different constituents of our platform, whether it's uh, the city transportation infrastructure to, uh, to the residents of that city, whether it's the riders and the drivers, whether it's the riders themselves and referring each other um, to, to, uh, as, as a user acquisition channel. Um, and so that's how we think about connection at Uber.